Okay, so I'm going to share my screen and go over a couple things. Again, welcome, I'm Danae. Um, I know some of you on here. Um, I have been in ed tech for, this is my ninth year. I am in three elementary schools. Um, we're doing these little mini PDs in addition to the Canyons U kind of self-paced uh, little modules, I guess you'd call them. So those are available now as well. Um, and that will help you with that personalized learning plan that you did on Tech Summit day one for things uh, that you, you know, that you wanna continue to learn about. Um, again, this will be recorded, so we'll let you know where you can find that. I'm going to kind of be the moderator. So if you have questions, there's that chat feature in the top right corner. If you wanna put questions in there while Chandra is presenting, I'll keep an eye on that. And then I'll, I'll, I'll um, step in if there's questions that Chandra can address or if um, there's something for the whole group. So again, just mute your mic and answer or ask questions in there. And I'm gonna present my screen to you. Hopefully you are able to see that. Are you able to see my screen here? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So what's new in Canvas? That is what we're going to be covering today. We'll also be covering it again August 11th, so next week. Our learning intentions today, we're going to cover, or Chandra is going to cover how to mass change assignment due dates in Canvas. She's going to show you how to copy to and send to. So if you're looking to share content maybe with your team members, you can directly share that and she'll show you how to do that. There's a new feature where you're able to put your pronoun. So where it has your name, you can put, you know, she, him, her, um, which is a great way, you know, to, to share how, how you're, you know, wanting to be referred to. Uh, there's confetti. So confetti is when students hand in assignments, they get this little, you know, little confetti thing that falls down as kind of a little celebration. There's a way to do sortable student names. Um, if you are elementary, which in the chat, I am i can't see it right now. Um, if you can put what grade levels you are on so she can kind of, you know, address different things at different levels. But there's elementary theming. So it kind of puts it in more of a, a younger age friendly um, theme. There's also a place that you can, in your assignments, um, do how many allowed attempts so you can do unlimited or you can say i want two attempts so kind of with our mastery um grade or mastery grading system if you are allowing them to do multiple attempts and then there's also the canyons district course templates so if you're looking to not have to recreate your own template for your canvas course you can pull in um, some pre-created templates. So the success criteria for today, you'll know you're successful when you can use the features in Canvas to sup, uh, supplement your current knowledge. Uh, the multi-tiered system um, of supports framework, that's what we use here in Canyons to kind of guide all of our, our learning and teaching, and you should be familiar with that. If you're new, that will be something you will become familiar with. Uh, this next slide, you got this in your email from your, um, I believe from your ed tech or from one of your coaches. This is all of the series for the mini PDs. You're in a mini PD right now. So here's the list of all of the different um, things that we're going to offer. Again, they're at 9, 11, and 2. And you can pick and choose which ones you wouldn't want to participate in. And again, there's our... our um, learning intentions. So Chandra, I'll let you introduce yourself and go ahead and get started. Again, if you have questions, please put them in the chat. Make sure you're on mute and we'll go till about 11.30. So hi, I am Chandra and I am an ed tech. Um, I was in secondary last year. I'm moving back down to elementary this year. 
And Danae and I actually started together. So this is also my ninth year as an ed tech. Um, so I'm going to be the one that's kind of taking you through all of this today. And we're going to start with confetti. So when a student goes into an assignment, so they can just go into their modules and they go into their assignment. When they go to submit their assignment, whether it's a text entry, a Google, whatever it is, the submission, um, so they're typing in their entry. When they click down here on the submit button, the confetti is going to fall. And basically this is just a really good thing to teach your students that they should not move on to the next page of after a submission until they actually see that confetti. I know a lot of students are like, I know I turned that in, but this is just a way that they can make sure that that's actually turned in, that that assignment has been submitted. Um, I know that there's been a couple times when I've been doing courses lately um, that I swear that I've turned in the assignment, but just making sure that they, they see that confetti will help them a lot. Um, mine came down with butterflies, but it will also come down with like panda bears. It will come down with all kinds of things. So if I resubmitted this assignment, um, notice that my confetti changes. So that one is rocket ships. But every time, um, just make sure that they see that confetti when they are going in. Um, before you move on, Chandra, just one one thing came through. It says, is there a way to do confetti to show the pat they passed the assignment? Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Chandra. It's it's only if you submit. It they could be submitting with a zero, you know, a zero, getting a zero, and it would still. It's just submissions. Right. It's and only then, submissions for now. Yep, and the other question came in, is the confetti automatic or does the teacher need to set it up? This is automatic, it's set up by the district. There's not a way for you to turn it off, it's just automatic on. So good good questions coming in. And I actually don't think that there is a way to turn that off right now, so it's just there. All right, so the next thing on our list is assignments allowed attempts. So basically when you create an assignment, you can decide whether you only want students to submit at one time or if you want them to submit it multiple times. So the only way that they are going to, uh, you're going to see this is if you have a submission type turned on. So right now it has no submission. Notice you can't see that feature, but as soon as I turn on one of them, so let's say I do an online. Now notice down here I have submission attempts. I believe it's automatically set to unlimited. So if you decide that you don't want it unlimited, you would need to change that now to limited and then choose the number of attempts. So maybe I want them to have two attempts or maybe I want them to have three attempts because they're doing like a pre regular and a post type thing. So then you could change that and then they would be able to submit only that amount of times. Um, I know a lot of teachers, it's just like, I want them learning. So a lot of them will just keep it on that unlimited and let them submit in order to get it. When you go into your Canvas grade book, you'll see the uh, most recent submission first. And then if you want to, you would have to go into the right hand side and look back to see what they've submitted prior. So just so that you're aware of that. Any questions with that one? Nothing has come through on the chat. Okay, so I'm gonna take us into our settings really quickly, and we're gonna talk about pronouns and the elementary theming. So pronouns are a really good idea for students to set as well as teachers, um, mostly because we have students who are named something like Ryan, or I have had a Logan in my class, and, and you have these names that could be uh, male, female, etc. So you want to make sure that um, you are referring to them in the correct pronoun. So if you um, you do it as an example, and then you have your students do it as well. So in your account settings, if you come to your account, and then you click on settings, 
right here is where it will show your pronoun. In order to edit it, you will come over to the right hand side and click on edit settings. And then that's where you will be able to change it to she, her, he, him, or they, them. Or you can have no pronoun. But our idea is to try to get a pronoun so that you can um, create that safe net with your students. Questions on that one? Nope, we're good to go. Okay. So the next one we're going to talk about is theming. Theming has to be created um, on every single Canvas course. So if you set it for one Canvas course, you're going to have to reset it for any other courses that you want to have the same theming. So for example, um, right now, if you look at my text, okay, this is all it's changing is the text. Um, so right now it's a very um, just plain, simple, probably like Arial type sans serif text. But if I go into my settings and I go to my feature options right here, it should be like the third one down from the bottom. You can go to Canvas Elementary Theming and you can turn that on. Notice it says that it's only going to work with that. So then when I come and say, okay, now I go to like my homepage of my course. Notice that it's changed it to a little bit cuter font, if you will. And you can decide if you like that or not. You can always go back and turn it back off if you prefer. It will only work with your text though and that navigation bar. Any other stuff that you add to it is going to stay the text that it was before. Questions with that one? Just because it says elementary does not mean it has to be used only in elementary, by the way. So Chandra, a question came in if we're going to rewind a little bit back to the assignment attempts. Okay. The question, the question is, if it is unlimited attempts, so if the setting was set to unlimited, mm -hmm. do students have to redo the entire assignment or just the questions they got wrong? If it is a quiz, I believe they have to redo the entire thing. If it's like a Google assignment, they would just pull in that, or they would just continue typing on it, and then they could resubmit it that way. The thing is, is that if they submitted it because you say it's due at like 5 p.m. or something like that, you would be able to go back and see what their first submission was to see if they actually got their assignment in on time or not. So. Um, if they submitted it once and then they submitted it the next day at five o'clock, you would be able to see the difference between what those two submissions look like. Okay. Does that answer that, Krista? Okay. Good? Yep. She, yep. She's good to go. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Good question. Okay. So this next feature is probably one of my new favorite features that Canvas has to offer. And that's mass changing assignment due dates. I know that when you move um, assignments or like you import a new course and it asks you to redo the, ass the assignment um, due dates, it does it, but it doesn't make it the best. So if you want to redo due dates, um, the best way to do that is go into your assignments right here. And on those three little dots now, there's a button that's called edit assignment dates. And it actually allows you to go in and change any due dates that you need. So it will have the due dates that you currently have. But let's say um, there was a snow day or something else. And so you didn't get to it. Those two or three assignments or whatever that you gave and you need to push things back. This is an amazing way to now push those back. I know that um, you can also... If you only want to see certain assignments by their date range, you can put that in here and it will help narrow it down. So maybe you have like your first semester versus second semester, you would be able to narrow down those due dates so you don't have to see an entire list of all hundred assignments. You would maybe narrow it down. So once you've done that, you've typed in the new dates, then you can just come up here and say save. You can also come here and once you start clicking on things, notice that there is a batch edit where you would say all three of these assignments, I want to shift it forward by this many time or this many days, 
or you could also remove the dates here so they're just gone and then as you start assigning assignments they'll show up the reason you may want to remove dates is because if you have it published even though it may not be in modules it would show up on their calendar as like a to do so there's that one any questions with uh, mass editing assignment dates i have not seen anything come through yet right now all right so the next one we're going to look at is the copy to or share to feature this is going to show up if you want to copy an assignment or if you want to copy a page. So if I want to share, for example, this Flipgrid assignment, or maybe not Flipgrid because that's an LTI, but uh, maybe like this digital divide assignment or something like that, if I come over to the three little dots over here, I can use, I'm going to scroll up for a little bit, um, over here, I can either send it to or I can copy to. Send to means like I want to send this to Danae so she can have it in her classroom. So I would click on it and send it to. I could just start typing in her name and it should show up eventually. Okay, so then I could click on it and I could send it to her. As soon as I do that, what's going to end up happening is when they log in the next time on their account up here, there's going to be like a little number one. When they click on that account, it will say, um, would you like to, so-and-so has sent you a assignment or a page, would you like to add it? And then they can decide where they want it to go. The next thing that you could do is, let's say you Ch have- Chandra, a, why don't yeah. you go ahead, go ahead and send it to me and then I'll show them on my side what it looks like. Okay. In a minute. I mean, finish doing what you're doing, but I'll show them what the other side looks like. Okay. And it does take a few minutes sometimes, so don't expect it to be like a right this second that it's going to show up. And the next thing that you're going to see is that copy to, and that's going to be, let's say that you have a math class, a regular math class and an advanced or math class. And they're different enough that you want to make sure that you keep them separate but they're maybe the same enough that you want to um, just edit the assignment details a little bit. So if you click here on the copy to, then you would be able to decide which course you want to copy it to. I have district access, so I'm seeing every single course in the district, but you would be able to see only your courses and you could even search for it by beginning to type. And then it would ask you like which, or then you could click on it and you could even say, I want it to go into this specific module. And you'd be able to click into the module you want it to go into. And if you wanted to get really specific, you could say where you want it to go. But anyway, you just click on that copy button and now it's gonna automatically move it into that other course for you, which is very nice. So questions with the copy to or share to features? Uh, nothing has come in yet on questions, and when you shared it, it has not popped up yet, so I'll wait and give it a few minutes. It does take a little bit of time, so I'll let you keep going, and I'll keep an eye on it, and hopefully in the next nine minutes, it shows up, and I can show the other, the other side. Sounds great. Okay, so the next one we're going to look at is list students by sortable name. So when I am doing that, that's going to be in our grade book. So when I come over here to grades... Right now, I see it um, with Danae and Jessica and my test student, and notice it's by their first name. But if I come right here to my three little dots, I can actually decide how I'm sorting it and displaying it. So if I want it to be by last name instead, I probably would do this last name then first name, which would be more applicable to myself, my secondary teachers. My elementary folk might want it more with that first and last name. After I've done that, I can also change it by that sort by, and maybe I want it to go Z to A instead of A to Z, et cetera. So that is another feature that they've just added. Um, you can also do secondary info if you want to and even put in their SSID or SISID. I'm not sure why you would do that, but that's an option as well. 
questions with that um, one? Yeah. So again, I'm we're, I'm just getting us kind of caught back up. Um, does the copy to look the same as the send to with that little number one notification? And the answer is no. If Chandra, and I'm hoping it'll pop in to show you, um, the send to, so from one person to another person, you will get that little notification. But on the copy to, you're only, you're copying it to yourself. So it won't give you a notification, but you'll know that you had sent it to yourself in another course. And it just will then show up either in the announcements or the page or the discussion, whatever thing you, you um, copied, it'll just show up on your list. There's no notification for that. Yeah, and just kind of be careful with that because it, like I said, it does take just a little bit of time for it to copy over. Um, I did have one teacher at one of my schools last year um, that was very impatient and she ended up having it in her new course, the one that she copied it to like 20 different times because she's just was like, it's not working. So she tried it again and tried it again. And then all of a sudden it showed up like 20 times and then she had to go back through and delete it like 19 times. So just be careful with that one. Okay, so any other questions with those? Uh, it's looking good right now. Okay, so the very last thing that we were supposed to show you in this session is to look at the online course templates. So inside of comments, so this isn't inside of one of my Canvas courses now, I'm actually moving over to the blue area again and clicking on comments. When I click on comments, I'm now going to be able to see thousands upon thousands of results for um, that are inside of comments. One thing that I would highly suggest you do, since we are inside Canyons, I would highly suggest you filter over here. And then where it says only Canyons District approved resources, I would highly suggest you click on that one because that's going to be something that has been approved and submitted by our district. So now when I start to look, okay, it already narrowed my numbers down from like over 100,000 to 115 results, which makes it a lot easier for me to look through. When I'm looking through, um, anytime it says template or you can search for template, you know that it's going to be something that was built to help support um, our district style guides. If you're elementary, um, looking at these like early learner ones are really good. If you're secondary, you may not want to necessarily look at the elementary or the early, but you could look at the elementary middle school. Those would work. And there's even high school templates, depending on how cutesy you want yours to look. Notice that there is like welcome to science or language arts. So they do have some that are pre-built to kind of help you out. Um, when you are looking, there's one for online learning specifically. And if you just search for Shimin, oops, S-H-I-M, um, there are the three online learning templates that were just barely created within the last couple um, weeks. And those are going to be the ones that um, our online te learning teachers are going to implement. But anyone in our district, this would these would be great for blended learning as well. So anyone could use them. So when I'm looking for them, um, templates, I usually either look for Shimin, S-H-I-M-M-I-N, or another one to look for is Camille Cole. And she has great templates that she has added in here as well. So that is our online templates. Um, one thing that I would highly suggest is I understand that um, you may not want to use their templates specifically for your classroom, but they do have great assignment um, looks to them. So to make it easier for students where they have like, here's our learning intentions and, and they've got images and stuff to make it recognizable for your students. So I would highly, cons highly consider um, opening up or creating a course, a sandbox course pulling those templates in and just at least looking to see what theirs looks like and then maybe 
um, doing that copy to your course so you can at least pull in those specific pages that you want. Okay, that is all we have for this session. Does anyone have any questions? So I didn't see any pop, oh, well, somebody just popped through. Once you import, are you able to edit? Yes, that is correct. Yep, once it's in your course, you, it, any changes that you make only happen in your course. Um, so the little icon did not pop through on mine, but I'll show you where it would be. So Chandra sent that to me, it, again, takes a little bit of time. It's even been about 10 minutes, but up here on my account, cause she shared it with me, there'd be a little one, kind of like the inbox has my number, little number five there. It would have a little number next to it. When you click on that, if you're, you, there's a shared content and then you would see Chandra sent you, you know, blah, 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 whatever it was. And then you can import it into your course from there. Um, and just a little piggyback on the sandbox course. I just, there was several people when we did the tech summit live last week. Um, your sandbox course is literally just that something you play around in, you know, Chandra had hers. I have mine. We encourage you to have a little course. That course will never get deleted by the district. It's, it's yours. It's a manual course that you've added, but it's a great way for you to test things out. You know, you don't want to throw something in your um, real course with your live kids and find out, oh, something went wrong or it didn't work. And so that's a place that you can kind of test test things out. The other thing, um, and Chandra, I'll pop it up real quick. Um, a good place to, this is just a bonus piece of information, is the student view. So in the very beginning, Chandra, what did you do? Oh, when you did the confetti. She was in a place called student view. If you have not seen that before, let me just get to my sandbox course a minute. It's called Gothard Practice. Um, from the home page, you can click on it right here, student view. Notice how that changes. It puts that kind of pink bar around the outside edge, but that's always a good place to click and check so that you can see exactly what your students will see um, from their view. And again, that was just a little bit of a bonus, but she went, she was using that. So I thought I'd make sure to tell you how she got there. One thing I like about that student view um, is that it lets me reset it. So if I want to test something out, it didn't work how I wanted it to, I can click on the bottom down there and click on reset and then redo it again and make sure it worked. The one downfall to it is because you are logged into your CSD docs. If you try to do a LTI, like a Google LTI and test that because it's still you that's logged in as that test student, it will not let you test the Google LTI. So just that piece of advice. And if you're wanting to learn more about Google LTI, Katie and I are doing that at two o'clock today. So come on back and we'll show you the Google LTI. But thank you for joining. We'll let you get on with your day. If you have questions, reach out to your coaches um, and have a great afternoon. Thanks everyone.